Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Matt, I am the American Canadian Gamer, and earlier today I was going through my hard drives, doing some cleanups, doing some backups, getting stuff, you know, opened up and cleaned up a little bit, and I found this old Titanfall match on my hard drive that I completely forgot about. I recorded a long time ago, which is why it's not in 60 FPS, I only recorded it in 30 FPS way back then. This was before any major updates and before any major expansions or anything, and it kind of made me realize that I haven't actually played Titanfall in a while, and I've been kind of thinking about why haven't I? I mean, what was it about the game that just didn't make it last? And it kind of brings up the question, did Titanfall fail? Was it actually not that great of a game or what about it caused it to just kind of lose steam and lose its hold on the community? Because you remember when it was first announced at E3, everybody was up in arms like, oh my goodness, it's Titanfall. I mean, you still had the people that were like, oh, it just looks like Call of Duty with mechs, which they're not far off, but the game was so much more than that. But really, everybody was all hyped up about this game. There was just so much... Uh, advertisement for it and just so much press and coverage and everybody was just waiting for this game to come out it came out and a couple a couple of months later it's just kind of gone and it just kind of makes you think well what really happened there and I think it comes down to a few main things and I think the biggest of them all was that the game was overhyped I think Titanfall was just way overhyped. Do you remember the IGN ad, their little slogan like, Believe the Hype? That is just a pure, just simple look at that this game was overhyped. Like, that's just proof right there. That's the word I was looking for was proof. That's just proof that this game was just way overhyped for just anything. I mean, eventually, when you start overhyping a game like that, when the media starts covering it that aggressively, when the publishers start marketing it that aggressively, our imaginations start taking hold, and eventually we imagine something so great that no game can live up to those expectations that we've created and that we've been given by both the publishers and the press because, hey, they talk about Titanfall. Titan, you know, they get lots of ad revenue. They get lots of clicks. They talk about it more. They hype it up. They say good things. The publishers are pushing it. And you Eventually, you view it as like the next gaming messiah, like it's going to change everything, like it's everything that you wanted it to be, and then it comes out and it's like, it's still a good game, but I was expecting so much more, and it's not the game's fault, it's the fault of the publishers and of the media, and the same thing happened with Destiny, I think. Destiny was super hyped because it was Bungie's first new IP since Halo, and there was supposed to be this big grand game changer that really was super overhyped, and it's just something that you see happen occasionally throughout game's history. A game is announced, it's hyped up, it's released, and people are disappointed. And I think that was one of the main driving factors behind Titanfall's, well, downfall, really, was just it was overhyped. People were expecting so much more out of it than what they actually received. Now, that, I do think, was the main driving reason, but there were other little factors that it did have that were actually problems. It had launch day issues, that were pretty bad. It, it, the game just wouldn't run for a lot of people. The beta ran so much better than the actual release did because it just didn't work. It didn't get you into matches very well. The matches were laggy and just all sorts of problems that just really, really shook down this experience. People hopped in, they wanted to play, and then they couldn't. Not only that, they kind of changed up their matchmaking system like partway through the game's life cycle to where like the teams wouldn't be scrambled, like the losing team would sometimes be completely kicked out. Like a bunch of really weird stuff that just didn't keep the game fun. It would like the team that won would stay, the losing team would be kicked off, they'd have to find all those new people. Instead of just scrambling the teams that they already had, they searched for like half a match all over and it just kind of... I think that was a nail in the coffin at that point because it took a game that was actually still going pretty well and said, oh, we're going to make it even harder for you to find matches. We're going to increase wait times. We're going to make it so that you're always playing with the exact same people through everything. And if you have one person that's really good on your team that's just winning everything, we'll have fun playing with them because they're going to take all the glory, all the credit, all the kills, and you're going to just kind of stand there doing nothing the whole time. So that was another thing, and I think the last major thing was actually the game seemed to have just a little bit of a lack of content. Now, this is kind of a double-edged sword in modern first-person shooters because I actually kind of approved of the quote-unquote lack of content with Titanfall in that they didn't have a very wide selection of guns. And I actually praised that, and I stand by that praise and the idea that 
instead of having 10 different submachine guns that are copy paste of each other with very slight differences, you had one submachine gun that just fulfilled its role as a submachine gun. Well, technically they had two, but they didn't have very many beyond that. They had their one assault rifle, they had the two submachine guns, they had the burst fire rifle, they had the semi-automatic rifle, they had the DMR, they had the sniper rifle, they had the shotgun, and then they had the smart pistol. They had those. They didn't have five different shotguns, they didn't have 50 different snipers, they didn't have t like 50 different guns like uh, Battlefield 4. Three had, I think I counted, 80-some guns when I last checked, and that was before any expansion, so it could even be more right now. I stopped following the game. So I actually praise that because it's like, well, look, it's just a little simpler, it's a little more streamlined, and it's a little, makes a little bit more sense. Focus on balancing a smaller group of weapons as opposed to putting in a ton of other weapons, but the fact of the matter is people like that unlock system as kind of stupid as it can be sometimes people really do enjoy that oh you did something here's a cookie oh you did another thing here's another cookie oh here's a candy bar oh congratulations you unlocked this you unlocked that oh big flashing bright shiny colors look at all this people enjoy that part of the unlock treadmill and i do enjoy parts of that but i don't like having to unlock every single little thing like that's one of the things i'm getting tired of with call of duty even though i enjoy doing it it's like okay i've unlocked all this stuff before and you by the time you unlock all the stuff you want you've basically leveled up and it's like well i might as well prestige and the same thing happened in titanfall it's like well i unlocked all this stuff i want to use but now i'm rank 50 should i just go ahead and do the basically the titanfall's version of prestige go through that and you know that that's a problem that you have because with Titanfall, you had that lack of things to unlock, though. Like, Call of Duty, you had a ton of things to unlock as you were leveling up, and you could get all sorts of different things, all these different blinking lights, all these flashing colors. With Titanfall, you didn't have that because there weren't as many things to unlock, so very rarely did you see the, oh, you unlocked something, congratulations sign. You usually saw the, oh, you leveled up, and then every now and then you saw, like, the, oh, you unlocked something thing. So I think that was something else, like, I think a lot of modern games have kind of trained a lot of people to the idea of you do something, you expect a reward just by playing the game. Like, it doesn't matter if you're good or bad, you're going to get these rewards. And I think that's one of the things that Call of Duty is really nailed in that, oh, it doesn't matter if you're good or bad at our game, you'll get something just for trying. And I think people kind of expected the same thing out of Titanfall, especially since it was uh, coming from Respawn Entertainment, the remnants of... Infinity Ward, I think they expected that same thing, and when you don't get that instant gratification that you're so used to getting, you're just not going to enjoy it as much, and you got to think it's marketed at the same people that enjoy Call of Duty, so that market of people is expecting, or at least used to getting, that kind of instantaneous gratification whenever they do anything in a game. So I think it was a lack of filler content, as unfortunate as that is, being overhyped and a bunch of matchmaking issues that really led the game down the wrong path. I think the game has a lot of amazing potential. I loved the Titan and Pilot kind of uh, uh, asymmetry that they had going, the way that you could move and parkour throughout the maps. I really enjoyed a lot of aspects about Titanfall. I think the franchise could go really great places. I loved that every pilot had an anti-Titan weapon that you could use at any time, unlike like Battlefield, where if you're not an engineer, basically armored vehicles will annihilate you most of the time. Like, everybody had an equal chance against everybody else, and that's something I liked about Titanfall. I'm really excited to see what they do with Titanfall 2, because there's definitely going to be a sequel. The first one was incredibly successful from a monetary standpoint, maybe not from a, you know, a looking back hindsight 2020 perspective, maybe it wasn't so successful, but I think it got enough monetary success that they can say, okay, we found a formula that works, let's tweak it, let's refine it, in the same way that you could compare like Modern Warfare 2 to Call of Duty 4, the way they tweaked it and refined a lot of systems there. So we'll see what Titanfall 2 brings, possibly a lot of new good stuff, I don't know, I don't think Titanfall was a failure, but I do think the game could have been a lot better, so that's just my little two cents on it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I think I'm going to try and cover a little bit more Titanfall than I have lately, now that I remember that it's actually on my computer. So, as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. My name is Matt, and I'll see you next time.